This is Wednesday Wisdom, a weekly devotion where we follow the F260 Bible reading plan. Today we're going to be in one of my favorite passages in Scripture, Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to walk through the first part uh, of this chapter and, and see kind of four main sections which really show us the grace of God and what it means in our lives. Well, let's start in Ephesians 2, uh, starting in verse 1. It says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, and indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. So in Ephesians, and what Paul's telling us in Ephesians here, is that all of us uh, were born in sin. And really this idea says you were by nature children of wrath. What does that mean? It says that naturally we were sin, and all of us had was sinned because we were sinners. We were all born sinners. We were conceived in iniquity. It's not just that we sin so much that now we're called sinners. No, that's really who we are uh, when we're identified as with our father, our first father, Adam, right? Uh, his sin caused all of us to be born in sin as, as he was our federal head. So we were dead in our trespasses and sins, right? The wages for sin is death. And that's the reality for everyone who's been born uh, apart from Jesus Christ, that we are dead in our sins. And it doesn't matter how much good we do or the things that we try to do, we can't change our nature, right? That nature is what it is. It is against God. It is, uh, it is hostile towards God. And we need a changed nature. We need supernatural intervention. There, there's no way we can fix that nature unless someone outside of us does it for us, that being Christ. Look at verse 4. It says, but God. And aren't you thankful for those but gods in Scripture? It says, but God. Well, what did he do? Being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we see here that salvation is not of us, it is of the Lord, right? He says that God was rich in his mercy and his grace. It was, it was nothing in us that really made God want to save us. It was his great love and the love in which he loved us, right? It says that, well, he didn't save us while we were righteous in Christ, right? He saved us while we were dead in our sins. And we, we are dead in our sins until that point of salvation. We all are dead in our sins. But it was because of his love. You know, one thing that I always think about is, okay, does God love me? How do I know that God loves me? Well, well right here, this, this verse, it says, He loved us, and once you loved us, how did he do that? He made us alive in Christ, right? We know that God loves us. We know that God is for us. Not because things are going well in our life, not because we feel good today and ate a good breakfast or anything like that. No, we know that God loves us because he sent his son for us. The greatest thing that anyone could do, the, the greatest human being, he died on the cross for us to take our sins, to be our sin bearer. What, what more could God do? Now, there's lots of blessings that come from that, and that's not the end of God's love, but that is the tangible, objective truth that, yes, God loves us. If you're a believer, you can say this day, God loves me because he sent his son to die for me, and I have assurance that he's going to take care of me. If he would give me Christ, what good thing could he possibly not give me? So, because we are made alive in Christ when we were dead, then made alive through Christ, and he raised us up with him, right? Verse 7, so that in the ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. So here we kind of see this purpose. Okay, why did God do this? Well, it was because of His grace, but He's glorified in that, right? It's not our works. We can't boast. Who the only one who can boast in our salvation is God, is Christ, it is our triune God, God Father, uh, the Christ, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father, right? He, he is the one who has accomplished this great salvation, and it is a free gift. Have you ever earned a gift before? Well, no, then it's not a gift, right? You, you don't say that when, you're, when you work, you know, two weeks and then you get your paycheck on that Thursday or that Friday, um, do you say that that's a gift? 
No, that's not a gift from your boss. You earned those wages. But what if you are just given $200 by somebody? Well, that's a whole other thing. That's a gift. All you do is receive that. And that's really how salvation, we, we, we didn't earn anything to that. Our works don't play a part in our, in, in our justification by any means. It is, it is we receive that by faith. So it's not by works, which means what? We don't get any of the glory. The only thing that we can boast is boast in God because of His great mercy to us. And, and, and that's He gets the glory. You know, we, we don't really understand why there's so much sin in the world. I and mean, we know it's because of, uh, because of sin uh, and because of Adam's disobedience. And we think, well, you know, God, couldn't you have done this? Couldn't you have done that? Well, all those questions really don't matter. What we know is the world we live in is the one in which God gets the most glory. And He is seen as Savior and Redeemer in this broken world because He has saved us and he, he sent His Son to die for us. And so before Adam fell and before Christ came, um, we didn't know God as Savior, but now we know God as Savior, and He gets the glory. The, the world is this divine theater to show the glory of God, and all things are by Him and through Him and in Him, and so He is glorified. And we have nothing to boast except in God, and that's good news. Now, it may take a little bit to our ego and to our pride. No, I, I, want, to, I want to work this. I want to earn this. There's so many things in my life that I feel like I've earned. I want to earn this salvation. Tell me what to do. It's not like that at all. It's receiving that gift, resting and receiving Christ and all that He offered. That's what faith is. So we can't boast in anything at all. We must give God the glory. It says in verse 10, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. So how do we respond to this? Well, we, we are His workmanship, right? It is God who did this. It is God who saved us and redeemed us. It is Christ who died and was crucified. And it says he did this for good works. We were the, the God prepared them beforehand for us that we walk in them. So we don't try to abuse this grace. We don't just go on sinning so that grace may abound. That, that, that really shows that we haven't understood this truth of the gospel. If you think, well, I can just uh, sin and then sin as much as I want, and then one day I'll just, I'll just ask for forgiveness. We're really misunderstanding the nature of grace. No, we're saved and created unto good works. Why? So that we will glorify God, right? It's all about God's glory. So, so God saved us and we glorify Him in that. But now we are actually redeemed. And as new creations in Christ, we walk in these good works. We glorify God. We love our neighbor. We love God. We share the gospel. And we walk in these good works and give God the glory. And then people see His glory through us. We are now better image bearers, right? And we're reflecting His glory as mirrors of God's glory throughout the earth. So don't try to abuse this. No, we receive that gift, and then we take that gift, and we live a life that's pleasing to Him. And we say, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me, and help me to live a life that is glorifying and pleasing to you. Because one day we'll be in the new creation and no longer able to sin. Um, only glorifying God, only walking in those good works. So that's what we're being prepared for, and that's what He's even partially giving us a taste of in this life. So be who you are. Be a new creation, um, and, and rest in your Father and in the love of Christ today. Well, thank you for joining me for Wednesday Wisdom. I will see you next week for another devotion. Have a blessed week.